Do you struggle with bad groove? Do you find that you can't bounce to a drummer and you can't quite lock in during that really important gig or that really important rehearsal or audition? Today, we're gonna to be going through the top 10 tips to get that killer groove into your playing. I'm Steven Swift, and I'm gonna be taking you through that today. So, first tip, obviously number one, we're gonna start with relaxing. This is really important. You don't wanna rush this. It's really simple, but if you don't do it, you're gonna get really bad playing. So relax from the shoulders, from the neck, from the elbows, and from the wrists as well. You wanna do this with both hands, because obviously if you wanna do it with one, half the battle, we wanna do this properly. So nice and limber, try and get that yoga mentality. And when you're ready, it just allows you to kind of relax a little bit more and it helps you to play really fast as well. So all of these things, I'm relaxing my fingers and my wrist to get this kind of thing going. Really helps to lock in with that drummer when they're playing those really fancy, nice little chops and those drum fills. You know what I'm on about. You know what I'm talking about. So point number two is to get into the movement of it. I already did it and it's just because it's very natural for me. So what you want to do, do you want to kind of like move the neck, move the shoulders, tap your leg, tap your foot. You want to just kind of get into the groove. So I'm just going to play something random and see how my body reacts. So. All of this, I'm moving my shoulders, I'm moving my neck. You don't really want to move your elbows and you don't want to move your wrists because obviously that's going to make it harder to play. We're trying to make everything easier, not harder. Makes sense, right? So this is point number two and it might take a little bit of time to get used to it. So start with your foot, just tap your foot nicely to the beat. And then if you can, bring it up through your body. So you start with the shoulders, then you can move the neck. Everyone has seen someone do this before. And if you haven't, then you're about to become that person. So it's a really, really good, useful tip. So point number three is to practice to a drummer or a drum beat. The reason why I recommend this highly, hence why it's part number three or tip number three, the reason why is because a metronome is really kind of consistent and stable, which is great. But the problem is, is it's not giving you a groove. It's just tick, 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 tick. It's not really that great. If I'm honest, I don't like it. It's important and you should do it. But if you put a drum track on and the drummer's going straight away, you're going to start to lock into that drummer. You're going to start playing the kick drum. You're going to try and aim for the hi-hats. You're probably going to aim for the snare as well. So just to give you that groove again, I'm the best singer ever, as you can clearly tell. So da, da, ka, da, da, ka. <laughs> me in nicely so I'm doing all three of those points straight away point one relax point two would help if I remembered it get into the movement so I'm moving my neck and I'm moving my shoulder and then point number three is to practice with a drummer or a drum track there's plenty that you can find and you can also make your own as well to lock into that really epic style of jazz funk soul metal pop etc so point number four is to actually learn a drum pattern instead on bass. And a lot of you at home are probably looking at me going like, what is he on about? Why are you playing drums on bass? Kind of just give me a second to explain and it will all make sense. So a drum beat obviously is just rhythm. Drummers are just rhythm machines. If you kind of take the human element out of them, they are people too, you should respect them. But in terms of a drummer, what they're doing is they're playing a drum pattern and they're playing rhythm. So what we do is we don't play any notes, but we play the rhythm of the drum beat. So like. That's just a random drum beat I've got in the back of my head. Obviously I'm not doing kick, snare, hi-hats, all this other stuff because we're bass players. So what you do is you just copy the rhythm in general and then you try and apply notes to it when you're ready. So. And all of 
a sudden, it kind of gives you a little bit more momentum, gives you a little bit more of a style, makes you a little bit more unique as a bass player, which is really important. Very, very, very important to get really good groove. So practice to a drum track or practice to a drummer, an actual real life drummer. So that is point number four. Point number five is to try and play bass standing up. And I'm not gonna demonstrate that today just because I don't have a strap. Some of you may have noticed. So the reason why you wanna play standing up is because you can get your whole body into the movement. You can start to tap your foot, you can move your shoulders, you can kind of rock out, start to headbang if you really want to, if you're into metal and rock. But this applies to every style of music, so don't worry. So the reason why we practice standing up is because the bass will be on your body in a different place. So it might make you groove differently. I'm sat down at the minute and a lot of my grooves are quite like chilled out, quite relaxed. Whereas if I stand up and I'm like energetic and I'm in a really hyper mood, I might start playing some like proper full on rock riff. Etc. etc. So that's a little bit more aggressive and it's a little bit more kind of quicker and a little bit more simplistic from a groove point of view, just because I'm not moving around the fretboard a lot. So try standing up try sitting down and your groove will change. It's why you see jazz bass players sometimes play sat down. And it's also why most of the time when you go to a gig, people stand up. Really important thing to be wary of. So the next point is to start listening to songs in depth. And this is really important because bass gets lost on your little tiny MacBook speakers, which hopefully you're not using to listen to this. So those little tiny MacBook speakers and those little tiny phone speakers that people annoy you with on the bus, we all know those people, trust me. Hopefully you're not one of them. So these things don't transmit bass frequencies very well. They really don't. It sucks the bass completely out the mix and it sounds horrible. So get some good headphones, get some decent speakers. And what will happen is you'll start to hear that bass pumping through. And if you can hear it, you can then start to understand what's going on and it will also make your groove better because you'll hear a bass player play a certain note in a certain place in a certain song. And it could literally be anything. It could be your favorite bass player or your favorite song, but it'll just kind of make you go, I get it, light bulb moment, that big flash of light, you're like, I get it. And then you can put it into your playing and straight away, you can then just become a better bass player literally within seconds or minutes, depending on how long it takes you to hear it, obviously. So it's a really useful tip that people kind of forget Music is all about audio and all about being audible. So it's a massive thing to be able to actually take the time to listen to things properly. So really important, remember that one. So the next one, so far we've spoken about how to get good groove or killer groove, hence the title of this blog. So instead of actually trying to play a million notes a second, what we wanna do is we want to start with one note, just one note can be anything on the bass guitar but one note. And the reason why is because your groove is all about rhythm. Doesn't matter whether you play a note on the E string, a note on the A string, it could literally be anything. But we wanna make sure that that one note grooves so hard that you get that gig that you're looking forward to or you join that band or you're just in your bedroom rocking out and someone walks past your bedroom door. I was gonna say bedroom window. If someone walks past your bedroom window, probably be a little bit scared because they're like off the ground. <laughs> so if someone walks past your bedroom door and they go, that's killer, that's a good thing. That's what you're learning in this blog right now. So one single note and just listen to how this grooves. So. So I'm just kind of messing around with rhythm, doing loads of other things, which we'll explain later in this video. But I'm just messing around with different styles of groove. And I'm kind of, you know, once again, getting into it. Every time I play bass, I'm moving in some way, shape or form. And it helps me lock everything in nicely. So you should try it too. Next point then is to get into the habit of humming or tapping different rhythms. And the reason for this is because it makes you think like a singer it makes you think like a keyboard player. It makes you think more musically, more melodically. And what I mean by that is you'll actually start to play bass lines 
that you can remember and people sing to. So, for example, if we take, unfortunately, it's one of the most common bass lines that everyone knows, but it's a really good one to start with. I'm going to play it just for you in a second. It's Seven Nation Army, but as soon as I mention it, everyone goes, duh, 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 duh. Doesn't have to be in key, doesn't have to be in tune, because I'm not singing in key or tune. I'm not a singer, trust me. So, what we do is we hum or tap the rhythm, and because we're concentrating on it before we play anything on the bass, it will lock it all in really nicely, and you'll get more melodic with everything that you're playing. So, I'll play that bass line. Obviously, what I hummed and what I played were the same thing. They just weren't the right notes because I can't hum in tune. It's a good habit that I've got. So, if I was writing a bass line for a song or if I was writing my own song, then I would sit there and hum something over the music and it could literally be anything. So it could just be da, 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 so. And straight away, I'm just playing random notes, but it's actually quite catchy. So this is all about groove. This isn't about playing a million notes a second. Yeah, leave that stuff like at the door. We'll do another blog on stuff like that some other time. But this is all about killer groove and it's all about getting your bass lines to make people dance. And that's what groove's all about. So take the time to hum, tap a certain rhythm out. Doesn't even matter if you can't write it down. As long as you can hum it, you can play it. You've just got to try and find the notes that sound good to it. So really important tip. The next one, which is kind of something that I was doing just as well, is to learn to play staccato and legato. For anyone that's looking at me at the screen going, he's using classical terms. Like, yes, I am using classical terms. I am a pop musician though. They are two things you should know and two things you should study. So for anyone that doesn't know, staccato is short, legato is long. Just think of it as this. Staccato starts with an S, short starts with an S. Makes sense. Legato starts with an L, long starts with an L. Makes sense. So long and short notes will change the groove for you. And what that does is that allows you to have heavy moments in a groove and also kind of light moments in a groove. So if I play the same thing that I just was humming and played, listen to how some of the notes are longer and some of the notes are shorter. And those last two notes, well, the first note and the last note, they're the longer ones. The ones in the middle are the shorter ones. And it makes you kind of move in a certain way. So if I switched it round and played the first and the last note as long, sorry, short notes, we're flipping it round, short notes, and then if I play the other notes as long notes, listen to what happens with this groove. It's like a little bit random. It doesn't sound as cool. It doesn't bounce as nice. And the reason for this is because they're not quite where you want them to be. You want a really long note to start with. So it's like duh, da da, da da really nice like little kind of short notes. So try and experiment just because you found a bass line or a groove that works really well. You can mess around with staccato and legato. And this is how you turn something into funk, into reggae, into jazz, into pop, rock. They all use similar notes on the threadboard, but they're all different rhythms and they're slightly different lengths to like microscopic level. And that's staccato and legato. So these things are super important. Take the time to experiment with them, mess with them and see what happens. It's all about trial and error. So if you play something and it doesn't quite sound great, that's fine because every musician does the same thing. I've sounded very bad for a very long time and now hopefully I sound better. Answers on a postcard. <laughs> so the next tip is to also start using ghost notes and muted notes. So ghost notes and muted notes are kind of different things for different musicians. So 
Forget about what drummers kind of say about ghost notes. Forget about what guitarists say about ghost notes. Bass players, if we're playing ghost notes and muted notes, it's to fill in the space, it's to make the groove busier without playing anything else. So if I take that little pattern again, that little kind of nice little bass line we've somehow just plucked out of thin air, it's good. So if I start putting muted notes and ghost notes in the middle of it, what we're gonna find out is it changes the whole thing again. So. And imagine it like a hi-hat from a drummer. So obviously we're going back to the same point we made earlier, learning drum patterns. The hi-hats and the ride cymbal of a drummer are kind of where we wanna put our muted notes if we're not playing a note or a bass line at that time. So if I play the first note, that's all right, you know, I'm keeping general time. Sounds cool. But I can start to like mix up the rhythm and I can start to make a groove just by playing one note and a million ghost notes. So. You can just mess around with any rhythms you want. There was, uh, for any kind of musicians in the audience today that know music theory and know rhythm in terms of written kind of notation, I was using quavers or eighth notes, semi-quavers or sixteenth notes, and also triplets. And you can literally use anything. Just kind of experiment and see what happens because it's actually really cool to try and change your groove, to try and change the bounce, and see how your body reacts to it as well. It's all about kind of internalizing everything. See this instrument as an extension of yourself, not just a bass guitar. So that is actually our final point. So if you do want to learn any more, and if you do want to kind of find out more information, we do have one-to-one -one lessons, we do have beginner courses, we do have advanced master classes, and we have other blogs come in as well, not just this one. If you found those top 10 useful tips for Killer Groove really useful, then hit that subscribe button and click that link below to get access to awesome bass lessons and a free giveaway as well. FYI though, unfortunately it's not a free bass, not this time anyway, but we hope you enjoyed this and I've been Steven Swift and I will see you very soon. <laughs> <laughs>